Chucky fans and horror fans alike around the world, I ask you that you join me in celebrating the 32nd anniversary of what is, in my opinion, the best Chucky movie, the best horror movie, the best slasher movie, and what is all around just the best movie in the entire world, Child's Play 3. Hi, it's Alex Vincent. You're watching Chucky Fan 101 with Isaiah. Isaiah himself. Thanks, guys. You heard it here first. <laughs> What's up, Chucks, and welcome back to another video. Today, I saw by the title and that obvious thumbnail. Like I said, today is the 32nd anniversary of my favorite Chucky movie, Child's Play 3. And to celebrate, I decided to make this video talk about why Child's Play 3 is my favorite Chucky movie. Because every time I tell other Chucky fans online that my favorite Chucky movie is Child's Play 3 and that I think it's the best Chucky movie, they always ask me why. So the next time they ask me why, I'm just going to point them to this video. And if you listen to my voice right now, it's a little scratchy and I keep having voice cracks. That's because I'm just getting over a cold. But no code is going to stop me from showing love and appreciation to what is, in my opinion, the best Chucky movie. And my favorite, for that matter. And as you can see, I'm just for the occasion. I got my sweatshirt with the Child's Play 3 poster on it. And I have a blanket hanging up back here that has the Child's Play 3 poster on it as well. And let me set him down to show you the next thing that I wanted to show you. Underneath the sweatshirt, I have on a t-shirt that has the Child's Play 3 poster on it as well. So now, without further ado, let's talk about why Child's Play 3 is my favorite Chucky movie. Now I have different key points I'm going to be talking about to tell you why, starting with the plot. I really like how Child's Play 3 has a similar yet slightly different plot than the previous two entries in the franchise. By that, I mean it has the same concept of Chucky going after a child to put his soul in their body. Only this time, however, it's not Andy, instead it's Ronald Tyler. Basically throwing a new challenge Andy's way because now not only does he have to take down Chucky, but he also has to protect Tyler in the process, basically making him Tyler's protector, just like how Kyle was his protector in Child's Play 2. And I think Andy does a really good job of doing that in this movie because despite Tyler being naive, which is expected for a child his age, of course he's not instantly going to believe him that the doll that he really wanted that he just found out was alive is trying to kill him. But despite all that, Andy still tried his hardest to protect him and honestly, I think he did a really good job. The next key point that I'm going to be talking about are the characters. And I'm only going to be talking about the main characters and not the side characters as they don't serve as much to the plot as the main characters do. And I really enjoyed the main characters in this one. They were very interesting in their own unique ways. Started with Andy, of course. I really like the way he was written in this one because despite being traumatized by Chucky on two separate occasions in the previous movies, the literal second he found Chucky was back, he didn't even hesitate to throw himself in the way of danger to take down Chucky and to protect those around him. But while I do understand one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like this movie is the fact that they changed the actor for Andy. Instead of being played by Alex Vincent like he was in the first two movies, they aged him up eight years and had him played by Justin Whalen. The best way I could defend that is the words that came straight out of Don's mouth. Where on multiple occasions where he was interviewed talking about Child's Play 3, he said that young Andy had run its course and that he didn't want to drag young Andy out to three movies, so they aged him up a bit. We were just, you know, following the the tried and true tradition of that all soap operas do, you know, yeah. where like where you you age characters supernaturally, yeah, just to get them to the point. D where do you, you think want there was there was nowhere else to go with Andy as yeah. a little kid? Yeah, yeah. I think I, I felt like the movie. By, by Child's Play 3, we were it was getting to feel repetitious, definitely. Yeah. And while that change was controversial, I do think Justin Whalen did a very good job portraying Andy. Now, moving on to Tyler, like I said earlier, he was very naive at times. Some people found it annoying. I found it as he's a child, so of course he's going to be naive. I mean, it, like I said, it's expected for a child his age. I didn't mind the character, and I thought it was a good idea to throw a new person of interest Chucky's way. And I think Jeremy Slivers did a very good job as Ronald Tyler. Now moving on to Harold Whitehurst, and while not serving as much to the plot as I would say Tyler did, he was a nice addition to this movie, basically being the second person that Andy got introduced to, the first being Tyler. And he was also one of the very few people I can who was actually nice to Andy. And also, spoiler alert, I think that him sacrificing himself around the end of the movie to save the people who were bullying him this entire freaking film, that was very admirable in my opinion. He definitely goes on the really short list of people that I did not want to die. And last but certainly not least, Kristen De Silva, and oh my gosh, her character was incredible. She was a very strong, brave female character, and she definitely goes on the list of strong female characters within the Chucky franchise. Alongside the likes of Karen Barkley, Kyle, the list goes on and on. She's definitely among the top three in my opinion, and I really enjoyed her character. The next key point that I'm going to be talking about are the one-liners, and I don't even really feel the need to actually talk about this one. I'm just going to let these clips do the talking. Don't fuck with the Chuck! You just can't keep a good guy down. Presto, you dead. Good soldier is always prepared, Tyler. I say no more. 
The next key point that I want to talk about is the final act, and I cannot tell you guys how much I am in love with this movie's final act. Like seriously, one would never think that the final act for a horror movie would take place at a carnival, and yet for a Chucky movie, it works. Like it fits really freaking well here, and the sets were incredible. They were extremely big and elaborate. We had like three different parts of this final act. We had the graveyard sequence, we had the area where Tyler got his legs stuck and Chucky got half of his face cut off. And we had the mountain that was made of skulls. I like to call it Skull Mountain with all the fans at the bottom and the lightning and like, oh my gosh. Plus this final act had a lot of action and suspense. Like, can we talk about the shootout between Chucky and De Silva? Like the slight suspense there where you're wondering who's gonna be the faster draw and obviously it was Chucky. And you also have the action and suspense from when Andy was climbing up the Skull Mountain to reach Chucky before he finished the incantation. Like the viewers just left wondering like if Chucky's actually going to be able to do it because he had been saying the incantation for a long period of time and Andy almost fell into the fan at one point. Like there was just so much going on in this final act that I just love every single second of it. And with an amazing action filled and suspense filled final act also comes with a very well shot Chucky death. Okay, listen, I know us Chucky fans hate watching Chucky die, but we all can collectively agree that Chucky had the best death in this one. Like, it was so well shot, I am not even kidding. Much like this entire final act was. I could go on forever, but I don't want this video to be too long and we have to move on to the next key point. In conclusion, this was an amazing final act. Literally my favorite final act of all the Chucky movies. And the last and final key point, which I'm sure you all were waiting for me to talk about, which is why I saved the best for last, Chucky himself. Like seriously, oh my gosh, this is literally my favorite version of Chucky across all the movies in the franchise. From his personality, to his humor, to his one-liners, to his laugh. <laughs> oh my god. All thanks to the contributions of the talented Brad Dorf because this was honestly his best performance. His personality maintained the more creepy and ominous and mysterious tone of the first two movies while also perfectly balancing the wisecracking humor that he's known for. And can we talk about his appearance like, oh my gosh. Big thanks to the contributions of the talented Kevin Yeager over at Yeager Effects for the work that he did on the first three films, especially this one, because, oh my gosh, Chucky has never looked better. His features like his eyebrows and his signature snarl were made more prominent in this one, and his pupils were made smaller, and I can definitely say that the majority of the public finds small pupils very creepy. Hence why a lot of horror movie characters who have pupils most likely are going to be small because small pupils makes for a very creepy and unsettling look, which I think they perfectly achieved here. I also really loved his clothes in this one as well. I mean, granted they use the same style that they used for the first and second one. The colors on his sweater, overalls, and shoes were a lot more vibrant in this one compared to the other ones. It really made him stick out more against the greenish, brownish theme of Kent, and I just loved that so much. Not even just talking about his alive appearance here, and you guys already know where I'm going with this. Can we also talk about his good guy appearance? Like, oh my gosh. Like, growing up watching this one all the time, every time I would see that doll on the screen, I'd be like, I want that one. Like, of course, the doll will look the same as the other dolls to, like, you know, the most common viewers. Like, if you're viewing the Chucky movies for the first time, you're gonna think that all the good guy doll appearances look the same. But coming from a person who has watched every single Chucky movie well over a hundred times, you can notice those subtle differences, and the good guy doll appearance in this one looks really different from the other ones. It's very unique, and... I've just always wanted one. Like, if you guys go back years on my channel, every time I've talked about Child's Play 3, I've always talked about how much I really want a Child's Play 3 good guy doll. And even with all the Chucky dolls that I have in my collection right now, that dream still hasn't been made a reality. But one day, that dream will be a reality. And hopefully it's this year, because I want this year to be the year that I get a Child's Play 3 good guy doll, because I just really freaking want one. One day. One day. And that's just about wraps it up for why Child's Play 3 is my favorite Chucky movie. I want to know all your thoughts down in the comments below. Let me know, do you like the movie? Do you not like it? Is it your favorite? Is it your least favorite? Where do you put it on your ranking list? Is there something you like about it? Something you don't like about it? What's your favorite Chucky movie? I want to know all your thoughts down in the comments section below. Like, comment, subscribe, share, follow me on X and Instagram at Chucky101. And follow me on Facebook at iChuckyFan. That's IK Chucky Fan. And the test is on screen now. All these will be in the description box below, including links to some places where you can watch Child's Play 3. I highly recommend you do if you haven't. It's a very underrated horror classic. I I really think you should give it a chance. Goodbye, and as always, have a checkified day, 
and happy 32nd anniversary to my favorite Chucky movie, Child's Play 3.